Let's not get stuck in our worries We'll make our way Won't you come outside Where the sunflowers bloom Breathe in the air Look up to the Hey, how you doing? It's me, Nomad, and uh, just want to tell you about this latest situation. So basically, the story is that, okay, so we've had the RV. You know, the last time I really drove the thing was when we came back from, right, Lake Isabella. And so, you know, I've been working on it, you know, clean it up, fix it up, make it livable and stuff. And it's kind of getting there now. So I always thought, you know, let's go to an RV park like you know that's what you do so you know I'm thinking man if I could just get there I can plug into the water the electricity I can maybe work on it for a couple days so my plan was to go to this cool looking RV park that's right in downtown Long Beach like it's right there like you can walk from this RV park to downtown Long Beach and see all the tourist stuff it's right on the water is is great but basically there was there's some things about rv park that i didn't know so you know this rv journey i'm just like running into these like obstacles every step of the way so now we're into rv park obstacles so <laughs> one obstacle is that they don't like old rvs okay so if your rv is more than 10 years old they're real picky about it because you know they want to keep an image up they want it to look good for the wealthy retirees and the big $100,000 RVs. They want them to come. And they don't want some junky RV. I wouldn't say that our, our RV looks junky, really. Um, it's right on the border of it, you know? Like, maybe if I washed it up. Anyway, in this particular trip, I didn't do any of that. They said, come on, and I showed up at night. And so they didn't really get a good look at it, I don't think. Um, but some weird stuff happened where I wanted to be there for two days. Now, it is the height of the season. It's August and it is the height of the season. And this is a, a premium spot. So I wanted to stay there for two or three days, like all weekend, like Friday night, Saturday night, and maybe come back Monday or whatever, or, or Sunday, whatever. But, you know, it was the first time driving the RV over there, like driving it on the road, on the freeway, since we got it from Lake Isabella, right? So that was a little bit harrowing. Unfortunately, I was too stressed out to film anything. I don't have any footage of that, tr that trip. I vaguely remember the door flying open. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that was on a return trip. It, maybe it was, but it was some point the door flew open, the side door, and like Kessie had to grab it and pull it back in without falling out. Craziness, man. Anyway, I was, this was all new to me because I don't know like what's going on in Long Beach. Like what's, and that's the thing, you move into a different area, you don't know the drill. Like in LA, I have a pretty good feeling of what the drill is, right? Like what to look out for and whatever. Um, but in Long Beach, I didn't, so it was a, the unknown. And But yeah, it was fun, interesting experience to do that for the first time. So yeah, it didn't quite go as happily as I wanted it to, though. I'm tired. So we're here in Long Beach at the Golden Shores RV Park in downtown Long Beach. And so far, it looks really awesome. It's my first time ever being in an RV. Uh, park and it's different it's like a whole nother universe that I didn't even know about I mean you see them but you know until you actually participate you don't really know what it's about and uh, 
anyway, we had a harrowing drive getting over here. I made a wrong turn and uh, it was harrowing and the, the back lights kept going off. I have to hold them in with a piece of cardboard and my daughter kept in the middle of the thing, they would go off and she had to fix it. She did. But anyway, we got a really great spot. We're like right here by the pool. There's no one at the adjacent spot. It's awesome. And uh, so yeah, so I have to figure out. The cool thing is it has it has uh, sewage, water, and electricity right here, and that's why I came. But it's about. No. I gotta figure it out. Um, anyway, I gotta figure out how to do this. And uh, that's where I'm at right now. We just got here about 10 minutes ago. Maybe now I can relax. I don't have to worry about the RV being towed. I don't have to worry about creepers. And we can... Yeah, I was. So what I'm trying to do now is figure out the electricity. Then I'll figure out the water. And then I'll figure out the sewage. I probably won't do the sewage today. It's not like we're using that power can anyway. Somebody get the, uh, at least if I can get the electricity, because that's the, the main the thing. That's where I'm at. Okay, out. So hey, we just had a magical moment. You would not believe what just happened. I figured out how to plug the air in, I mean the electricity in, and look, the air works. It's working. It's a miracle. You said there's a laundry room here? Yeah, everything you need is here. You just have to jump start that fan up here. You can't see it. See that fan spinning? You just have to jump start it. Cause I, I plugged in the 30 amp power on the outside and then I heard this buzzing. All the lights got bright. The microwave's on. I heard this buzzing sound. Like, what is that buzzing sound? I walked under the air conditioner. I was like, it's the air conditioner. And then I just jump started the fan, the fan was stuck, and I jump started with a stick and it started spinning and cold air is coming out for the first time. Aren't you excited, Cassie? Yeah. But it's only when we have when we're hooked up to this place. Well, the generator can do this as well. Can you charge like the generator? No, the generator just needs gas. That's why I put $50 in. So even if you weren't here, this is As long as we have the generator, yeah. Wait, that you generator need... No, just a generator. There's another engine under here called the generator. It's just for making electricity. At this RV? No, in this RV. So if we were not here, we would Yes, not yes. The only catch is you got to have at least a quarter tank of gas. If it's less than it, it won't so start. So we just putting gas in a long time ago. Yeah, but I just wanted to come here so I could really understand how everything's work, supposed to work. These things are designed to be plugged in. They're not off-grid. You buy them, the RV. And then you're supposed to plug it in at your house. They assume you have a house, because if you don't, how could you afford an RV? And then you go to an RV park and you plug it in. So they're just, these old ones were designed to be plugged in. The newer ones are more designed for boondocking and off-grid living and all that. But this is awesome, we have air. Kari! Kari! We have air conditioning, it works. Sun the back. Don't be so negative. What do you mean? Hey, it's not working. I plugged in the power to the side. The side we're plugged in. And then uh, that's what makes the air work. But don't you realize? Now we can get everything working. We can get everything working again. Oh, that's how you turn it off. To that sound, the sound of air. Oh my gosh. Finally, we don't have to have fans. And the cool thing about being plugged in here, what's that noise? Oh, that's this. We don't need these anymore. We can take this off. Yes. The plug should work now. Just test it out. I didn't even notice they were plugged in here. Yeah, here, unplug that. Right here. Look. Right there. Dad, why wouldn't it work? So when the... Wow, oh, it's working. I don't feel like that works. 
Here. Plug it in and see. Does it work? Yeah. It, just it says charging. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Let's see. Do How can you, you tell? The, do you see the look? Where? Oh yeah. That means it's charging. Awesome. 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 Cooler. Cool. Hi. Fan. Smell what? I'm trying to air freshen out this place. Roxanne, it was only a dollar. No, it's just, no, it did help about 10%. I did notice a difference. And then I don't like it. I told you I don't like it. Well, it's better than no deodorant. She's mad because I bought all this stuff from the dollar store. Yeah, I went to the dollar store to save money. Store. I know, you just, yeah. There's no reason to just not spend money. I'm not just spending money. The next day. We have some more drama. The first drama, of course, was the fact that we had to leave in the morning, which I wasn't, I wanted to enjoy the place. I didn't even get to enjoy the place because checkout was like 11 o'clock. So as soon as I get up, I'm all casual. I walk over to the place. They're like, oh, we're full. It's like, oh, crap. I don't even get to enjoy the place. But we're in Long Beach. It's not a big deal. So I'm like, I'm just going to drive down the street and park on the street in Long Beach. And we'll still enjoy it. Right there on your left. I just want to get an update on what's happening. So last time you saw, we were at the Ocean Shores RV park. And my plan was to be there for two days. But uh, anyway, I told the guy that I came in about nine o'clock and I told the guy, I said, I want two or more days, you know. And he marked it on the paper. He was like the night watchman dude, you know. And he's like, okay, yeah, they'll just charge your car in the morning. Uh, I said, what time? He said, 7.30. I just thought he meant as early as 7.30. I didn't think he meant I had to be there at 7.30. Anyway, I didn't get to the office till about um, 10.30. And they were like, oh, we're all booked up for tonight. And uh, so suffice it to say, we had to check out that dude. So we're in Long Beach, downtown Long Beach, and I've just been, uh, what did we do? I, we worked at a Starbucks, and we went to the Hyatt Regency, we worked there, and uh, yeah, so I was able to find a, um, a spot for the RV. Parking was not easy, but a little bit outside downtown, I found a park, a spot to park it near a park. I don't know what park this is, but... That's where it is now, and there's a beach right near it. And that's where we're at now. We're gonna have dinner here. We haven't eaten nothing all day. So, yeah. Alright, that's it for now. See, that's the park. It's up on that cliff there. And then uh, downtown Long Beach is that way, somewhere. So, yeah, it's kind of nice. I don't know what's on those islands. Oh yeah, the Queen Mary's over there. Hey, I'm here in Long Beach at this park and uh, I just got my first ticket because someone complained at this fancy building. I guess they didn't like my junky RV in front of their fancy building. Let me show you. So this is the fancy building. This is my RV. And they complained to the city and they gave me a ticket saying 
no RVs over 22 feet. There are no signs here saying that anywhere. So I'm gonna document this for the court because I'm gonna challenge this ticket. Although I know some cities have ordinances that you aren't allowed to park any RVs anywhere over 22 feet. But it was only here for a couple hours. As you can see, this is the only sign here. Hi. And there's no other street signs anywhere. And the only reason I parked there was because there was no other parking. So the only other street sign is this one. I'm visiting from LA and how do I know what the ordinance is? You can't just have random ordinances with no signage or warning. How was I supposed to know about that ordinance? You just pull random ordinances out of the hat or give people tickets. So now I've got to go to court and have this whole thing challenged. See, there's no other signs here at all. Later that same evening. Hey, it's us. Uh, I'm a little less mean tonight. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if I told you what happened. I think I did, but stuck here in front of a park in Long Beach near downtown Long Beach. About half a mile from downtown Long Beach. And uh, a Mercedes pulled right in front and is touching my bumper. <laughs> and this other construction truck is like four inches from my rear so I'm basically stuck here and I can't pull out and then got this ticket I don't know where I put it but saying citizen complaint uh, vehicle over 22 feet so I'm supposed to just randomly know about these ordinances right they must have lied because I, I know they have such ordinances but I think there's a time limit like 72 hours or something like that like I don't think it's just a blanket you cannot park your RV ever in the city that's not possible because people obviously need to park them for a few minutes so they probably just lied and said oh this RV's been here I have a sense that this park because there's our anti RV signs everywhere um, has been uh, used to be full of RVs or something and then they clamp down and there's a ton of homeless people in this park and there's a ton of families I just passed a family that looks like they're living out of their car with like four kids with like two families so um, I hate it when I see that because I think man if they just had an RV it would be so much easier um, but anyway uh, yeah this is kind of annoying this was not the plan the plan was I was supposed to be at the Ocean Shores RV park for two days and I was supposed to figure out the electricity, the air, get the water tanks full, flush out the tanks, get the water working, the water heater working, the propane working, the stove working. But instead, with like 45 minutes notice, I realized, oh, we can't stay there because they claim they're booked up. I'm still not 100% sure I believe that story, but... Um, and then I had to leave and it just was reactionary day and I had some computer work I had to do and I'm running around to first I had to find a place to park this thing and then I had to find a Starbucks and if you're gonna park your RV downtowns are the worst places obviously who would want to park your RV downtown well this Ocean Shores RV park is right near downtown Long Beach so I just sort of ended up downtown in Long Beach and that was not the plan so Oh, RV reality hits. Yeah, oh, I guess there was some Long Beach RV wars here. And it looks like the city won that one. But I don't see hardly an RV, and I see signs up everywhere. So, I'll have to research that and see what happened here. But, you know, people are starting, the cities are starting to catch wind of this hack, you know, and they want to rope people back into the system. You know, they don't like people hacking the system and, and basically breaking out of the matrix. Um, but we have to still try. So I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, my plan is to head back into L.A. I'm not sure where. Maybe I'll go back to that spot by USC again. I don't know. Um, I'll find a new spot, whatever. And then I just want to work on the RV tomorrow. That's my plan. So we'll see how that plan goes.
I'll show you around and see how junky this thing is at night. We have all the, because we're right in front of this apartment building, we have all these curtains up and stuff. This is how it looks. So the one good thing that happened from that RV park was my battery got to charge all day. So it's fully, well, it's not fully charged, but it's, it's charged enough to run the inverter. One, two, three fans charge my phone and my battery charger and uh, run these lights. These lights are pretty bright as you can see. Um, but this will probably only last a couple more hours. So, but I got a lot of gas in the tank so I could run the generator. Anyway, that's what it looks like now. We have this thing up. Yeah. It's starting to get kind of packed. I've been too tired to organize anything. Um, and I realize now in an RV you have to be extremely organized. And it's not like your house where you can just drop stuff. You know, you can't just drop stuff around, you know, and deal with it later. It's like everything has to have its place and that's not happening. We're just spending so much time running around in reactionary mode. Um, yeah, I would love to be able to just park somewhere that I don't have to worry about creepers or being towed or ticketed for at least two or three days. That would be nice. That spot near USC by the car dealership was, was kind of like that. But I was so worried the car dealership was going to complain. But, you know, a car dealership, in the back of a car dealership on some abandoned street is not like being in front of some fancy apartment building. So, all right. So there you have it. Um, <laughs> that was not what I expected. Like, we're going to have to try that again. So yeah, that's it for now. Thank you. Uh, like, subscribe, tell your friends. Thank you for following us on our journey. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, you know, leave your comments in the comments. And we will talk to you soon. Nomad out.